You can read that. Pikes Peak plus one. It's Sunday, recovery day. Although today, on Sunday, they run the Pikes Peak Marathon. So they people run up to the top like I did yesterday and then run back down. Yeah, a little crazy. Hard on your knees, hard on your body. I don't think I'll ever do that. Well, I shouldn't say that. Maybe someday, but definitely not in the next 10 years because it's just really hard on your body. I'm in recovery mode, feeling good. Got a little three-mile jog in today. Um, it was fun. Okay, man. Got third place. That was good. Very good. Uh, did I surprise myself? Maybe a little bit, but not too much. Like, I, I, I knew I was going to do well. I just, I guess I didn't know if I'd get top three. And so, how the race went, I'll just kind of walk you through it. Gun went off, first mile and a half um, is pavement, and then you hit the dirt, and then it turns into basically a single track trail. So then I was in my seventh and eighth with my brother, and then it was with my brother till about mile four. I was feeling a little better than he was, so I took off at about mile four and a half, maybe five, and it, just, it, it levels off just a little bit. So the total race is 13 miles and 7,800 feet of vertical. So I was rolling along for five, six miles on this. You're still going up, but you're rolling instead of going straight up. And then you hit tree line, and that's where I felt really, really strong. And I actually give a little bit of credit to my brother for kind of holding me back that first four miles and just saying, hey, let's save some for the top. And sure enough, I think because of that, hold him back a little bit. I did well on top, and I was able to pass three guys. So I think I was in sixth place with three miles to go. And then the last three miles, which is, you know, you're going, you're like at 11, you're basically at 12,000 feet, and then you're going up to 14,100 feet. So the last 2,000 feet of vertical, I was able to pass three guys. That's a cool feeling. That's a cool feeling. So very excited. Um, I don't know. It's like my first post-collegiate race so I was I left CU seven years ago and this is really my first race where I feel like I ran to my potential you know you put in the work and listen I don't train full-time I don't even train part-time but I, I squeezed in some pretty great mountain running this summer and sure enough you put the deposits in the uh, altitude bank throughout the summer and it pays off uh, long term so what's next <laughs> I actually have one little adventure that might be coming. I'll tell you about that at a later date, but uh, not now. So, a little tradition of mine is to take the bib number off of the singlet and then write, uh, write somewhere on it, whether on the front or the back, the place, the date, your time, and the location of the race. So, anyway, that's what I'm about to do, and then hang it up in the shed on the wall. Thanks for cheering me on. Thanks for connecting on Strava. Hey, man, you guys set your goals, whether it's a 5K, a one mile race, maybe it's a swim. All right, one last, one last thought, maybe, maybe. The Solomons, oh, so clutch. They were amazing to race in. For Pikes Peak, where the trail is just kind of beat up and the dirt is loose, these were just awesome. The lugs on the bottom, the S-Lab uh, Speed Cross model of the Solomon shoes, I love these. They were great to race in. I'm definitely gonna, actually I'm gonna train in these a little bit as well up in the mountains. But my go-to shoe is going to remain the Hoka's, um, eh, unless, yeah, unless someone wants to talk to me about, uh, you know, getting me some free gear and I'll, you know, give you a little shout on, uh, shout out on YouTube. So, but no, the Solomons were amazing and um, glad I made the switch, even though it was a little last minute, but they just, they were amazing. And there's very little wear and tear on the bottom, so I can tell they're uh, going to last a long time. And uh, yeah, so anyway, good work, Solomon. The neighbors know that we've arrived home. Oh man, here he comes. How'd they do? My legs feel pretty good. Uh, it's the evening now, it's dark out, and I uh, did get the, uh, the lawn mowed, so that's a good thing, which means if I can push a mower, 
uh, that's a good sign. The legs are recovering well. However, DOMS, D-O-M-S, delayed onset muscle soreness. In theory, I should be more sore tomorrow. That's the, that's the idea. But overall, feel real good. Feel real good. But to help alleviate D-O-M-S, True Love pulled through in the clutch and got me some new, fresh Epsom salt. You guys know how I love Epsom salt. And this is a new kind. It says on the, on the packaging here, revitalizing eucalyptus and spearmint. So I actually, this is my second time using it, used it last night, and it felt amazing. And here's something else, a little uh, something, something, something. So another doctor, this is all, oh, so this is the other brand that I've used for Epsom salt. But this is a foaming bath with pure Epsom salt, relax and relief with eucalyptus and spearmint. So good things. It's like, I actually, I think it, I know, who knows, might just be in my brain, but I, I believe it, it helps my legs feel better after hard effort like yesterday at the bike speed descent. So go check it out. Not a bad, not a bad race. Not a bad race. Upper right hand corner. Love you all. Great day. Uh, simple day. And we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Daily vlog. If you are new to the YouTube uh, universe here on this channel, I make daily videos. So subscribe down below and we'll connect. And I love the comments and oh, question of the day. Are you excited for Paul? I am. I am. Seek beauty, work hard, love each other.